Hello my friends, today I'm going to show you how to fake the crystal ball photography effect in Affinity Photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer from Vienna, Austria and let's get started. Here you can see one of the fake crystal ball photographies I have already done. There's a lot of reasons to do that. Maybe you can't afford the crystal ball, maybe you want to apply it to a picture you have already taken in the past. So we're going to apply it to this picture. And as you can see, the first thing that I did is to drag out two guidelines. You can do this by clicking on the ruler and dragging it into the picture. And if you have snapping enabled, they will snap to the center of your image. You can see that it's the center uh, by either the color change of the, of the guideline, either green or red, or that it's hitting your um, uh, handle on the side of the image. So... The next thing we need to do is we go over to our shape tools and select the ellipse tool and then you click to the center. This should snap right now to the center and you hold your control and shift key and this will guarantee that this will create a perfectly round circle and we will drag it out to almost the edge of the picture but not quite the edge. Then we are going to click on our um, pixel layer or image layer, right click and duplicate that. So there's duplicate, okay, there we go. And we're gonna use our move tool to use the side handle, move this in, but hold the control key so this will move it uh, equally on left and right until it snaps to the side of our circle and we do the same to the upper handle with our control key press so now this is snapping on all sides and we have a square image. The thing about the square image to know right now is that you can't apply effect to it right now. The reason for that is if I go here uh, to distort and spherical and I would apply the effect, you can see in the center here that it's actually not spherical, it's elliptical because this is still applying to the original ratio of that layer. To fix that, we can just right click on our layer and rasterize it and now it's truly a square um, pixel layer. I will move this on top of our ellipse layer, make the ellipse layer visible again and then hold one of the edge handles with control pressed, move it in until it snaps to the side of our circle like that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is now we're gonna go to filter distort, spherical, and we're gonna go to intensify 100%. And then we are going to make the radius bigger, but not the same size as our sphere in the background. We're gonna go, um, so it's still almost round like this. So the edges are looking from the original picture are still visible a little bit. Hit apply. The next thing we're going to do is go to filters, repeat sphere. So this will apply the very same effect to the very same area. We apply this again and you can see now we have a nicely stretched out picture um, inside of the sphere of almost all of the background of the picture. So that's very helpful to us. The next thing we're going to do is we take our ellipse, um, I can say ellipse uh, uh, layer and move this in, hold the control key and move this in until it, oh, we also have to hold the shift key so this is actually uh, still around because the layer that we just created is not perfectly round. So um can go like this. So it's a little bit smaller and then you can hit, uh, hold the control key and click on your ellipse layer and this will create a selection. And then we go up to select, invert, pixel selection like this. So this will select everything outside of the circle. We go over to our um, our pixel layer where we have created this sphere effect and hit the delete key on the keyboard. And you can see that this will cut out everything from the outside. We can now go, go control D to deselect. And now what we, went, what we can do is just um, with uh, holding one of the handles again and the control key, move this in so this is getting smaller to a size that looks good to us. Um, maybe like this. That looks okay. 
Okay, so you can see right now this looks like the glass ball, but not like it could be more three dimensional. So we will work a little bit on that. That is rather easy. What we're going to do is uh, with this layer selected, I'm going to close this other file here. So, okay, with this layer selected, we go to effects and we go down to 3D. 3D is not actually planned for this kind of completely spherical. Um, object but it works well enough so what we need to do right now is to make the radius as big as possible over here can we go even bigger I have never tried that actually oh we can even go bigger that's nice so let's go 200 let's see 180 okay that's not too bad good okay you can see this already looks better we can move the light direction down here and this is really helpful to getting uh, like a good 3D effect for that. And you can even apply multiple light sources, which we will we'll do in a second. Let's do it like this. Play around a little bit with the ambient light. Specular, we can reduce the specular. So this is more or less a trial and error to find out um, which of the settings work best for us. This looks pretty good. We can soften this a little bit. Okay, so now we can add a second light source. Move this over to the other side, pretty much to the edge. Let's see, maybe like this. We can adjust the light color of our second light. That's also very helpful. So maybe go into this uh, violet here because the background is also violet. And um, yeah, we can set it like this. Okay, so that looks pretty good. The next thing that we are going to do is um, I'm going to control and click on the layer. So again, this will create this selection and then create a new pixel layer. And with this, I'm going to use my paintbrush it's just, as you can see, just a round uh, brush that is set to hardness zero. It's a fairly big size. Um, and I'm setting to the color black. And I'm just swiftly moving around the outer edge here. You can see, maybe I make it a little bit bigger, actually. Yeah, that that's looks good. I can reduce the opacity maybe a bit. Let's set this to 50%. And then I'm just making some strokes outside here and then I'm switching my color to white and make a stroke outside here like this and now we can deselect that so now um, the the glass ball is a little bit lighter and this side a little bit darker on this side and we can reduce the opacity if we want to uh, so this is barely visible on the uh, on the glass ball like this Okay, and another thing that we can do right now is uh, we can again control click on our glass ball layer basically. Go to select and to outline and create a selection like a, a line selection like this. So like this and uh, it's, you see it's like a small outline. Okay, we select that then we create another pixel layer. We are taking our brush again and setting it this time to opacity 100% with white color in the middle. And I'm just going to paint outside so we have a white ring around that. Now I can deselect that layer. I can go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and just blur it a little bit. This is actually too strong. Just a little bit. Or maybe it was not too bad. A little bit more. Okay, let's go like this. And now what we're going to do, again, we're going to uh, control, hold control key, click on our spherical layer. Uh, so we have the selection again, go to select, invert, pixel selection. So we have the outside and again, hit the delete key on our keyboard. So it's deleting everything outside of that. As you can see, now we have like a white outline around our um, sphere. This will help us uh, make it look more three-dimensional. And again, I can reduce the effect here with my opacity uh, to make it less visible. Okay. 
And one more thing that I could do if I want to is you can download any kind of specular effect uh, from the internet. Let's go here to place, uh, select, where did I actually save that? It's in here, there we go. Select that, just place it in here. Way too big, we have to resize that. So there we go. Make this a lot smaller. And we will set this to screen and put it on top of the other layers. And we can put it, for example, here if you want to. We can reduce the effect, of course, or well, let's, let's just leave it like that. You can, of course, make it any size you want. I will leave it for now in this size. And another thing that I found that helps a lot uh, with making this more believable. So there's actually some more steps we need to take. So the first step that we have to take is uh, select our original picture in the background. Go here to live filters and select Gaussian blur because we want to blur the background a little bit. Not as much so you don't know anymore what's in the background. So this is okay. By the way, hit preserve alpha so you don't get these white um, uh, outside lines. Okay, so this is okay. And then we apply a little trick. We go in here to, uh, not mask layer, sorry, it was the wrong one. Uh, we go to adjustments and select vibrance. And we are going to reduce the vibrance by, let's say, 12% for this one. And then we create a second one that is just for our... Um, glass sphere layer, so adjustment layers, vibrance, and we are gonna drag this onto our crystal ball layer here. And we set this to plus 12%. So this has a lot more vibrance than the background, or not a, not a lot more, but a little bit more. And this makes it more believable and more intense as this kind of crystal ball effect. And the last thing you could do if you want to is um, to line up the, the horizons in your crystal ball and um, in the background picture. So for this, I would suggest you select all the included layers, hold control or press control G on your keyboard. So you create this kind of group and then you can move the group all together up here. Uh, so it's lining up with your horizon in the background. Okay. View, let's hide our margins here. Hide the guides. So this is our end result. Thank you very much for watching the tutorial. If you like my tutorials, maybe subscribe to my channel. I do two tutorials per week. If you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get my files with all the layers. You can get feedback on your own creations and a lot of other great benefits. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye.